Hi, my name is Lissa Frengel, and this is my Heidi Rosen oral case analysis. In 1979, Heidi Rosen graduated from Stanford and immediately began her career at Tandem Computer. She was able to obtain this interview for the editor of the company newsletter through a personal connection. At this point, she really did not have a network of any kind. She was able to obtain the position through this personal connection by obtaining the phone number of the woman in charge of the hiring process. She ultimately received the job based on the liking principle as illustrated in Harnessing the Science of Persuasion by Robert B. Cialdini. While being the editor of the company newsletter, she was able to work in close proximity with the Tandem CEO. She built a strong relationship with the CEO due to the liking principle and also the proximity principle as illustrated in Brian Uzi and Sharon Dunlap's How to Build Your Network. This close relationship allowed her to graduate from business school from Stanford in 1983 due to a recommendation letter placed by the Tandem CEO. After graduating, she went on to work with her brother and start TeaMaker, which was a company based on a software that her brother had created. This is the point at which Heidi really began to grow her network. As not many people knew much about TeaMaker, she became the authority figure on the matter. She began to reach out to members of the press and different groups and forums in the industry in order to spread the news, find backers, and grow her network. She joined several forums and groups, such as the Software Publishers Association. It was through these groups and forums that she began going to interviews, panels, and networking events. And it was here that Heidi was first seen as a giver. While part of these groups, forums, and at these events, it was seen that she was a giver when she gave time to people who showed grit or high interest, rather than only talking to people that had proof of immediate talent or success. She provided encouragement to those that showed this high interest or grit, and in doing so, she started to build a network with people that, in the future, performed well and made a business for themselves. In 1996, Heidi Rosen began working for Apple during a tough time in the market for the company. She provided social proof that not only was the company going to bounce back from this downfall, but also that her network had grown. She placed calls to several influential software CEOs, asking them to stay with Apple during this tough time and to also provide a quote saying that they were going to stay. She published these quotes, which showed that the company was going to come back from this downfall, but also that she did have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with these CEOs and that her network had grown since she started with Tandem. Heidi credits success for her calls to consistency and performance. She said that she's consistent in her actions throughout all interactions with the people she knows that are in her network. And she says that she is responsive in what she does and she helps people out in any way she can. This performance and consistency is what allowed her network to grow and allowed her to ask them for a favor during this tough time for Apple. However, Heidi experienced a burnout at Apple in 1997 because she was spread too thin, had no time for anything else, and saw no clear impact of her time spent at Apple. So in 1997, Heidi quit Apple and instead became a mentor capitalist, a position that she created. Mentor capitalist is based around the principle of reciprocity. She created introductions that were beneficial to both parties and allowed her to keep that positive relationship not only with the people that she was trying to help, but also with the people she was networking to. It is during this time as a mentor capitalist that we can really see the empathy that Heidi has for other people. She only asked as much as she was willing to give. We can also see that Heidi is an otherish giver. She gives a lot, but she does have set standards on who she will help and give her time to. This ensured that Heidi did not experience another burnout. And it also ensured that she did not ask too much from her network and did not experience a burnout in there. To strengthen her network, and the relationship she currently had with several members of her network, Heidi began hosting dinner parties. She made sure that these dinner parties did not fall prey to the self-similarity principle. Instead, she invited people and introduced them to new people to create new networking opportunities. The dinner parties created a safe space where people felt comfortable and did not feel like they were getting taken advantage of. 
but it was through these dinner parties that she was able to create these new networks, but also ensure that hers was strong. In 1999, Heidi took a part-time job with SoftBank as a venture capitalist. The decision came from her being self-aware and noticing that she was falling into the proximity and self-similarity principles. She was pigeonholing herself into the desktop software and operating system industries when she knew that she wanted to expand into the internet industry. As a venture capitalist, Heidi would receive an average of 10 business plans a day from prospective companies. Rather than just deleting the rejected plans, Heidi provided feedback. She realized that provi by providing feedback to the rejected plans, she was opening a door rather than closing it, in case the company did in fact find success with a different company other than SoftBank. In this way, Heidi was growing her network even more. From the Brian Uzi and Shannon Dunlap How to Build Your Network article, we can see how Heidi acted as a super connector for others. She also acted as a broker who stayed in contact with the multiple clusters of networks that she was part of. Heidi never stopped growing her network. From the beginning, when she started with just one personal connection, she grew that network, starting with the CEO of Tandem and then adding to it through Apple, through her time as a mentor capitalist, into SoftBank, and even, I would imagine, after that. Heidi is a giver. She is not afraid to say no, but she's also going to always give you honest advice and time, even if she doesn't have any. Not only is Heidi a giver, but she shows the six principles of persuasion, as noted in Harnessing the Science of Persuasion by Robert B. Cialdini. Heidi shows liking, reciprocity, social proof, consistency, authority, and scarcity. Heidi knows how to wield these principles in order to build her network while also helping out others.